When it comes to shooting with on-camera flash, such as at a party or something like that, it's almost never as simple as just sticking a thing on, pointing it forward and going crazy. So we're gonna take a look at five steps to improve your bounce flash photography. Let's check it out. Get your flash and stick it on the top. Make sure you turn that so it's in securely. Set to TTL with this Godox, it's already at TTL. If it's messed up, I can just hit in the middle there and reset it. Then what I would recommend is taking a piece of EVA foam. This one is fairly dead now, but I'm still using it. You can pick this stuff up in your craft shop, eBay, with a little hairband. Now we've got to give a shout out to Neil Van Neerkirk. This is blatantly his idea, the black foamy thing. We get that on top of there. Not only does that send all the light where you want it to go, but it can also help you on a busy dance floor to avoid blinding people that are dancing all around, almost shoulder to shoulder with you. Go into your flash function setting and make sure that you set to sync rear, second curtain sync. When your flash is on, that should change and you'll see TTL, sync rear, and all is good. You don't need to mess with anything else, not in this basic little run through anyway. These are literally just starting settings for you to shoot and see if you can get the ambient light where you want it before introducing the flash. Let's go with ISO 800, imagine indoor party scene shutter speed let's go with a 30th and the aperture f4 turn your flash on direct the flash head back and up but to the side whether it's to the right or to the left the idea is to direct all that light towards the wall the ceiling the combination of them both using the black foamy thing to flag the light, to direct the light all where you want it to go and then use that wall as your imaginary soft box. Nice, big, smooth light that will then fall down onto your subject. Personally, I'd never recommend just firing your flash straight up in the air either because you can end up with some pretty bad shadows under the eyes. Always back off to an angle to bounce that light nice and smooth so it comes in just as this softbox is doing now, but hopefully even better. Get out and play. You set your ambient light first, meter manually, then pop your TTL on, bounce it off a wall and enjoy. Now bear in mind that the ISO shutter speed and aperture can all be tweaked to get the ambient light that you want in the shot to expose for that and then the TTL will expose for your subject. The direction that you have the light come from can affect the 3D effect I think they're calling it these days. It can just give you a little bit more contour to the face for example in the portraiture. So I like to get a specific shutter speed and aperture that I'm happy with and then just tweak the ISO as the night goes along just to get it just where I want so the ambient light is well balanced with the flash. As the party goes on, if I need more impact, I can just slow the shutter speed down a little bit. And all this I do handheld. Let's just go back to that point about if the walls aren't white. I had a job this year in a small, nice little gin bar, all dark, wood, greys, mirrors everywhere which was actually the trickiest part of it and we still got a bunch of really cool shots with bounce flash flagging the light would make a huge difference in a small packed place like that you can avoid annoying party goers by not having the flash go into their face too much you imagine they're behind me as i'm shooting can get a bit awkward so just beware of that the black foamy thing that puts all the light where you want it to go, where you want it to come back from and gives you that extra bonus of not getting beaten up on the dance floor. That's just a simple little run through to get you started if you're not sure. Go through those five steps again. Hopefully I've made it clear. If not, be nice in the comments below. Let us know, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Take it easy.